Our solar system is a small haven in the vast, hostile void of space. It's the only home we've ever known. Our star, the Sun, is the big boss around here. Everything revolves around it. Formed some 4.6 billion years ago out of the gaseous remnants of an even older star, our solar system is today a collection of eight planets, hundreds of moons and billions of smaller objects, like planetoids, asteroids and comets. Put them all together and you'll get less than 1% of the solar system's entire mass. More than 99% of all the stuff found in our neighborhood is in the Sun. Now let's go through the solar system and explore all of our planets. Who knows, maybe you'll learn something new. Hello and welcome to 7 Facts. The first planet we encounter on our journey is the tiny and quiet planet of Mercury. It's the smallest and innermost planet in the solar system, named after the Roman god of travel and messenger of the gods. One year on Mercury lasts less than 88 days, so you can imagine just how close the poor thing is to the Sun. So close, in fact, that it's tidally locked with the Sun in a 3 by 2 ratio, meaning it rotates on its axis exactly three times for every two revolutions. As far as we know, Mercury is the most inactive planet in the solar system. The planet's surface is heavily cratered and is similar in appearance to the moons, indicating that it's been geologically inactive for billions of years. In the first 600 million years of its existence, the planet was heavily bombarded by comets and asteroids, which melted its inner core and created volcanoes. The biggest impact crater in the solar system was created around the same time, the Caloris Basin. This giant crater is 1550 kilometers in diameter and was created by an object 100 kilometers in diameter. But all that was in the past, because today hardly anything happens on Mercury. The planet doesn't even have an atmosphere, so the surface temperatures vary wildly. 427 degrees Celsius during the day and minus 173 during the night. So, not exactly a vacation spot. Next stop, Venus. Often called the sister planet of Earth and named after the Roman goddess of love and beauty, Venus is in fact far from being a nice place. Although it's similar in size to Earth, conditions on this planet vastly differ. This is a planet of volcanoes, craters and lava fields. Venus is by far the hottest planet in the solar system, with a mean surface temperature of 462 degrees Celsius. Its atmosphere, mostly carbon dioxide, is far denser than that of Earth. The atmospheric pressure is 92 times that of our planet, or about the pressure you would experience 900 meters underwater. Venusian winds can reach speeds of 350 kilometers per hour. We think that all this is because of a runaway greenhouse effect. It is thought that billions of years ago, Venus was cooler, had oceans and an atmosphere similar to ours. But as temperatures rose, the oceans started to evaporate and water vapor is an extremely potent greenhouse gas, so the planet heated up even more. One more oddity of Venus is its rotations. One year lasts 225 days, but one Venusian day lasts 243 days. So on Venus, a day is longer than a year. Also, Venus rotates in the opposite direction, meaning the Sun literally rises in the west and sets in the east. Yeah, weird. We'll skip over our own planet, cause, well, we already know what it's like here. Instead, we'll jump to our next favorite. Mars. It's named after the Roman god of war, but it's also known as the Red Planet due to its reddish appearance caused by the abundance of iron oxide, rust. While it's the second smallest planet in the solar system, it does share some qualities with Earth. A day is a little over 24 hours, its seasons are similar to those found here and temperatures can be somewhat bearable. The equator can even experience summer temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius. The polar ice caps are mostly water and if they would melt, the water could cover the planet to a depth of 11 meters. 
but that's where the good things stop. Mars has basically no atmosphere. Its surface pressure is less than 1% of the Earth's, meaning temperatures can fluctuate incredibly and liquid water cannot exist on the surface. With no significant atmosphere and no magnetic shield, Mars receives a full dosage of cosmic radiation that's deadly to any living being. Mars is less dense than Earth, having about 11% of Earth's mass, resulting in about 38% of our surface gravity. Oh, and the dust storms on Mars are the biggest in the solar system and cover the entire planet for weeks and even months. Despite the harsh conditions, this is our best bet to find life or to colonize. In the past, Mars did have the conditions for life to flourish and some of that life could still be there, below the surface. This is why, besides Earth, Mars is the most studied and well-known planet in our little corner of the universe. Before we continue, I'd like to ask you one thing. This channel has no sponsors, so if you enjoy the content I make, please consider supporting these videos by becoming a patron. You can check out my Patreon page by clicking here or find the link in the description. And with that out of the way, we can move on to the next fact. Now we've arrived to Jupiter, the mightiest of all the planets. It was named after the Roman god Jupiter, the king of all the gods. And appropriately so, because this planet is big. Two and a half times that of all the other planets combined. This is a huge gas giant made of mostly hydrogen. We tend to believe that the entire planet is made of gases, but in reality it could very well have a small crushed rocky core. We simply don't know. Its outer atmosphere is visibly segregated into several bands at different latitudes, giving the planet its familiar multicolored look. The most recognizable feature is the Great Red Spot, a giant storm that is known to have existed since at least the 17th century. This giant storm is 1.3 times bigger than our entire planet and we don't yet fully understand how or why it works. Jupiter is a mini solar system having at least 79 moons and even a very faint ring. It's also thought to be the protector of the inner planets. Due to its powerful gravitational pull, it is believed that Jupiter catches most of the asteroids and comets that would otherwise threaten the rocky planets, including Earth. You wouldn't want to get too close though. The radiation emitted by Jupiter would fry you and the temperatures and pressures are out of control. As you enter Jupiter's atmosphere, you would experience a steady increase of both, starting from around 67 degrees Celsius and about 10 times our atmospheric pressure, and as you approach the core, these go up to 36,000 degrees and 30 million times the pressure on Earth. Yikes! One of the most beautiful planets out there is definitely our lovely Saturn, with its gorgeous rings. Named after the Roman god of wealth, it too is a gas giant. Its iconic rings are nothing more than tiny particles of ice, ranging in size from 1 cm to 10 m. The rings have a thickness of as little as 10 m up to 1 km and may be the remnant of a disintegrated moon. The planet itself is an iron-nickel core surrounded by metallic hydrogen, liquid hydrogen and the outer gaseous layers. Wind speeds can reach 1,800 km per hour, enough to rip the flesh off your bones, so this too is a planet you shouldn't visit. You might want to try your luck on one of Saturn's 62 moons, especially Titan, which is bigger than Mercury and has its own atmosphere of nitrogen and methane. Bring a code though, temperatures are around minus 179 degrees. As we approach the outer edge of the solar system, we reach Uranus. This planet is named after the Greek god of the sky, the husband of Gaia, Mother Earth. The inner layers of Uranus are mainly ice and rock, but its outer gaseous layers are hydrogen, helium, water, ammonia and methane. This is a cold planet. In fact, it's the coldest. Temperatures here hover around minus 224 degrees Celsius. What is unique about Uranus is that its axis of rotation is tilted sideways. Its north and south poles, therefore, lie where most other planets have their equators. 
It's been theorized that this rotation is due to a massive impact with another large body, about the size of the Earth, that literally tilted the planet sideways. Just like the other gas giants, Uranus also has a bunch of moons, 27 that we know of. The weirdest looking one is Miranda. No one knows for sure how those weird looking features formed. It could be the result of a large impact that disintegrated and then reintegrated Miranda, or it could be the remnants of water and ammonia lava-like flows that occurred, well, we don't know why. In any case, as you can see, even in the far reaches of the solar system, there's a whole lot of activities. Last but not least is Neptune. This is the farthest known planet from the Sun, about 30 times farther out than the Earth is from the Sun. Neptune is named after the Roman god of the sea. It's similar in composition to Uranus and it too is really cold, around minus 218 degrees Celsius, although its inner rocky core reaches over 5000 degrees. What's special about this place is the winds. Neptunian winds are the absolute strongest in the entire solar system. Wind speeds can reach 2100 km per hour, which is literally unimaginable. While winds on Earth receive their energy from the Sun, winds on Neptune don't. Only 1% of the Sun's energy reaches Neptune, so most of the atmospheric energy comes from the extreme temperature differences between the inner and outer layers. Out of the 14 known Neptunian moons, Triton is the most well known. This large moon is thought to have been a dwarf planet that at one point was captured by Neptune's gravity from the Kuiper belt. Triton is geologically active and its most spectacular feature is its geysers that spit out nitrogen gas. And with that, our trip around the solar system's planets is over. But there's a lot more to this place than planets and in the coming weeks, we'll explore even more. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.